Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. Today we're going to take a look at something very simple, very clean, and uh, honestly, extremely well made to the point where it's actually going to surprise you the first time you get one of these in your hands. We're going to be talking about a relatively new and young maker. He's only about 24, 25 years old out of Poland named Kamil Lugosz. And I'm butchering that a little bit, as I've done many times in the past with my uneducated American tongue. But that's the closest I can come to correct Polish pronunciation. Uh, he goes by KD Knives, and I'll put down in the description below uh, the, his Instagram handle so you can find it more easily. Now, what we're going to take a look at here is his brand new model. It's his very first folder that he calls the Arson. It's a really nicely made little knife. And for those that think that every knife has to be uh, super crazy and overdone and uh, lots of milling and lots of crazy materials and flashy materials, that's not the way that every collector goes. Sometimes, and you've seen me praise some very uh, simplistic, clean designs like uh, this amazing knife here, the Lycodon. One of the reasons I loved it so much was just because it was so simple in its design and execution that you could focus on the beauty of the detail and finish work that was done on it. And that's exactly why I love this. Think of it this way. If you have an appreciation for knives like the Chris Reeves Sebenza, but you want a flipper, this is one of the closest ways that you can get to that in a flipper. And... Oh, just this action is so crazy smooth. You see that it doesn't, I mean, it drops free when I'm holding the lock, but when I'm off the lock, I just give it a little shake. You see that it doesn't drop 100% super fast. It's almost hydraulic. It's a really wonderful feeling. And I've only ever had a few knives that really did that. And the one that pops out of my mind right now is, is my good old standby Rockstead Shin. It almost has a, a hydraulic feel to it, the way that it closes on itself. Obviously, that is not the indication of quality if a blade falls free like that. However, it's the best way that I can represent to you because you're not here to touch it and flip it and feel the smoothness of the action. It's the best way for me to visually represent how smooth that is. Obviously, we're closing our knives like that. And when you do that, oh, it is so clean and so smooth. It's just ridiculous. And that honestly is why I love this knife. This is no flash. This is... It's not hype. It's not trying to be something that it's not. This is a good EDC knife. The size of it, eight and a quarter inches overall. And the blade, while it's a little more than three and a half inches, you've got a three and a half inch cutting edge, and it's just under three and a quarter inches in its total length. So it's a good size where it could still fill your hand, but it's nice and slim and lightweight and easy to carry. The blade thickness is about 160 thousandths of an inch. So still stout enough to be a good everyday EDC knife. But it's certainly not a big, thick, heavy-duty, overbuilt folder by any stretch of the imagination. So, uh, let's compare it right here and see. Yeah, that's pretty much the same as I have here on my Steve Skiff. So obviously a very comparable uh, type of size. This is a little bit uh, narrower and a little bit sleeker in some ways. But, uh, you know, same basic size, and I've been carrying that, uh, that skiff for a long time, and, and my other skiff even longer than that. So, what makes this such a standout? The first thing is, all of the machining, all of the finish work, every, all the detail work on this, even though there's not a lot going on, it's done simply perfectly. And sometimes it's... It's so easy to look at a knife like this and go, well, it, it can't be a, a fancy high-end custom because there's nothing crazy going on. It's just a simple, somewhat muted knife. That's fine. Again, go back to the Sebenza. The beauty of the Sebenza has always been its simplicity and its cleanliness and its smoothness overall. And that's what this knife exudes. 
Sure. Would I love to see a, a fancier, you have to excuse my hands here, I'm, I've am i been working and I didn't really clean my hands as well as I should have. Um, would I like to see a fancier, cool, custom pivot? Sure. Does it need it? No. Does everybody want to pay extra for things like that? No, not necessarily. Do I want something more than just a bead blasted titanium frame lock? Honestly, I have a lot of bead blasted titanium frame locks. It's it really it's a finish that I've always loved. So that doesn't, you know, play into it for me at all. Would it be cooler if it was carbon fiber or timascus or zirconium? Sure, but you're adding complication. You're adding expense just on the raw materials. This is a knife that you're able to get for $485. Now in the realm of custom knives, remember this is a hand-built custom knife, not a mid-tech, not a production, these are not made by the hundreds, these are individually made by one person, you rarely find a folder that's a full custom for under $500. It's, ex it's exceedingly rare as a matter of fact. And here you have a gorgeous hand rub satin blade which I believe my example it's not marked I want to say mine is uh, either M390 or S35 VN and I apologize that I don't recall but he, I know for a fact that he works with LMAX M390 and S35 VN so it's it's one of those three steels on this and he did a superb finishing job on this nice clean hand rub satin beautifully done all the way around clean nicely executed symmetrical grinds very keen edge very sharp all the way around you look at every little thing his plunges are perfect his symmetry is fantastic the action, as we've already established, is incredible. Uh, nice chamfering all the way around the edges of the titanium. Would I like to see a contoured frame? Absolutely. Do I need it? No. And as a matter of fact, a lot of people that are using a work knife, they're using an EDC knife as a utility knife, they do prefer a flat slab sided uh, titanium frame lock because it's square in the hand. It's not rounded and it's less likely to twist and turn in the hand. So if that's your preference, then this is even further going to impress you. You've got the lanyard opening back here, nice, clean, and easy. Nice fitment for the titanium backspacer. And you'll see how the blade is nestled in there beautifully. Perfectly centered. There's no additional tension from the lock bar. His lock bar relief is perfect. Uh, again, that aids in the smoothness. The pivot isn't too tight, the pivot isn't too loose, it's just perfect. Now I've been carrying this fairly often and I've been flipping it a hell of a lot and that pivot has not loosened, the blade has not lost its center, there have been zero issues with it. The cool thing about this is Camille had started making knives in around 2011 when he was still in high school. And while it started off as a hobby, he got better and better and better and better and he started with just a table saw, uh, I'm sorry, a table, a bench mill, a uh, little tiny grinder, a little vise, and this was all in the cellar of his house. As he was in college in 2014, he got so, he enjoyed knife making so much and got so popular in his local area in Poland that he decided to even quit college and just start doing knife making full time. And that's a big scary step. It really, really is. And while he's made some really nice fixed blades, it's the folders, as we all know, that so many people are attracted to. That's what people want to see. And while he's had hundreds of different ideas and variations and whatnot, he wanted his very first folder to be simple and basic and utilitarian and EDC friendly. It's the right size, it's the right weight, it's the right width, it's just perfect for all of that and to be used as a utility knife. So he took a little bit of design inspiration from his fixed blades 
and I, I gotta say, honestly, there's there's definitely a feel of a Sabenza in here somewhere. Very clearly, it doesn't knock off a Sabenza in any way, but uh, it certainly has that useful blade shape, very, very similar to a Sabenza. Not identical, just similar. And uh, he's always been fascinated with chemistry and metals, so he wanted to go with a kind of a chemical element name. Uh, so he was going to do arsenic, and it ended, ended up just it ended up being arson. Uh, so what we hear as arson here, translated into uh, Polish, would be arsenic. So, you know, he's got some cool ideas in the naming. He's got some cool ideas in the design. He's very clearly talented with the execution. The overall fit and finish, this is what separates you from everybody else. This is what separates the guy that's sitting at a table with thousand dollar knives and not selling anything and the guy sitting right next to him with the same type of knife that are 50% more expensive and he's selling everything. It's about the fitment of all the components. It's about the finish work that's been done, the care that's been taken. There are no tool marks. You can look all the way through this knife. Everything is perfectly cleaned up. Realize even somebody that takes titanium and does everything by CNC, it does not come out looking like this. You still have to clean up all of your edge work. Clean up all the chamfers that you've got all the way around. Clean up the inside of the titanium in and around, all around the pocket clip, the the pocket that the pocket clip is sitting into, actually this one is not in a pocket, it is it is uh, sitting right on top. I thought it was a single screw with a pocket, but it is two screws. But all that detail work, especially in here, a lot of cleanup work has to be done in that uh, lock bar relief. All these things are done by hand. And you're sitting there and you're taking time. It's a time-consuming process. And realize this, this is somebody that's making this from the ground up himself in his tiny shop and probably doesn't have the degree of tools and machines that many knife makers in this quality level already have. He's young. He's got a, he's got a whole world ahead of him. That's what's so exciting. And that's still the most exciting thing for me is to bring out somebody that is up and coming, that doesn't already have closed books. Uh, he's about a three to four month wait right now. He does ship to the U.S., no issues with that. So you're spending four eighty five. You're You've got one of the shortest wait times for a custom order that's available right now in any, anybody that's any good. This is a win-win. You're getting in on the ground floor. I've already talked to uh, one buddy of mine um, who had seen me post this before Blade Show, so well over a month ago. That's how long I've had this before I had time to do the review. I apologize to the world. And he ordered his. He's like, I, you know, I'm so glad <laughs> that, that you let me know about this guy. It's so hard to find a good quality knife that's a true full custom that's under 500 bucks. I don't have to wait two or three or five years to get my hands on. That's what this is. This is not the knife that's so beautiful and so exotic that you may be afraid to really cut stuff with it on a daily basis. This is also not, you know, a, a $1,300, $1,400 knife like this is. It's $485. Now, if you've only ever bought production knives or you've bought knives in a retail store like a Walmart or something like that, I understand that $485 sounds dramatic. It sounds ridiculous. It sounds over the top then this is not the knife for you and you're not the person that I'm really speaking to about this. You don't have that level of appreciation for that type of knife making yet simply because you haven't gotten there yet and that's fine. Enjoy what you enjoy. Buy what you like to buy. Nobody's talking uh, bad about you for doing that. But for those that buy custom knives, to look at a custom made, handmade, custom made knife that's under 500 USD is nearly impossible. You can count them on probably one hand how many knife makers, good quality knife makers, are offering a custom folder for under 500 bucks. That's what makes this exciting. Do you find this a little too plain Jane? That's fine. He's going to be offering other iterations. There may be in the future, for all I know, there could be carbon fiber and Timascus and other cool things. You can always request those things. He is a custom knife maker. 
However, the price is going to go up from there because you're paying for the more expensive materials and the additional work that goes into it. You know, to, to work a Timascus properly, you know, he's got to mirror polish the whole thing before he can uh, torch it and get the colors to pop. So it's way more work than just doing what he's done here. So there's different expenses that go along with that. But if you're looking for something that's clean, simple, does its job, and feels smooth and clean and refined, and that's the thing that I can't convey to you over a video is how it feels when you put this in your hand how well balanced it is how clean everything is there is not a single hot spot on this entire knife how crisp that detent is how solid and sure that lockup is you can listen for it and you can hear it but you have to feel it to really understand just how nice it is how velvety smooth that action really is these are all things that I have no way to truly convey to you take the chance grab one for yourself yes you're ordering from overseas you have to wait three to four months and you'll probably wait a week to ten days for it to get shipped because it is coming from Poland however those of us that deal with custom knives a lot we've waited longer and paid a lot more try it I promise you you're gonna enjoy it and I am very excited to see what he has up his sleeve for the future because I tell you right now, as much as I enjoy this, this is a knife that I can EDC, that I can carry every day. When I show it to somebody, I can proudly show that beautiful blade finish. I can let them feel the incredible action and I'm proud of the knife and I'll use it and I'll cut with it and I'll do whatever. But the days I want to carry something a little more flashy or fancy, this is not the knife I'm going to reach for. So I'm excited to see the day when he offers something in this vein that's amped up just a little bit that's just a little bit more spectacular a little bit more visually appealing with more color or more uh, vibrant materials whatever that may be so that I can have this one for its current purposes and the other one to kind of be just a little bit more showy and a little bit more fancy because I feel his workmanship his quality his attention to detail would certainly justify a thousand dollar knife in Timascus and Damasteel or something like that. This is not somebody that needs to use a bunch of fancy materials to mask the fact that he doesn't have the basic skills. We see a lot of that happening. He's demonstrated that this is, you know what, look at it this way. This is like standing naked in front of a crowd. Every flaw that you have is going to be exposed when you're naked. If you're dressed up, so if this was all in Timascus and a fancy Damascus blade, there are little imperfections that could be hidden within that pattern. There are little fitment issues that can be hidden by the bright colors and, and everything as they, as they come together because it's dressed up in a way. This is naked. This is uh, twig and berries hanging out for the world to point at and laugh at if there's any imperfection this is as naked and raw as it gets and you take a good look and there's nothing here that jumps out where you would say his essentials aren't covered his fit and finish isn't quite there yet he can't justify charging more money when using more expensive materials you can't say any of that because it's all right here it is naked, laying out here for you to analyze, to study, and discover. And I think, honestly, now that I've said that, I think that's why I have the appreciation for this knife that I do. Because it is, it's laying it all out there. It's naked, it's spread eagle on the bed. And every tiny imperfection, every little mistake that he could have made, especially as a young maker, would jump out it would stand out because there's nothing to hide it and here we've got a knife that is as close to perfect as anyone could reasonably expect I have yet to find a flaw on this knife and I've had this for over a month I've carried it probably a couple dozen times and I've liked it more and more each and every time I have so that's probably the best way I could put it it's any issues would be glaringly magnified. They're not masked. 
it's all right here so if you like what you see here and you're thinking to yourself boy I sure would love to have that in Zerk with a uh, you know a, a Timascus pivot hit them up maybe it can happen I, I'm, I'm not promising that but hit them up and see what can happen and tailor that knife to your specific needs otherwise go just the way you see it here titanium frame lock titanium hardware uh, the titanium pivot screw up obviously titanium pocket clip high quality steels like LMAX M390 S35VN um, he's happy to do anodizing and, and bring out some colors if that's what you want try it out shoot him a message I'll put all that information down in the uh, caption below but for right now I'm out of here my god this turned into a 20 minute video how on such a basic knife how does it happen maybe I just talk too much either way I'll catch you guys on the next video